The fallout continued today from the collapse of the White House plan to invite the leaders of the Taliban and president of Afghanistan to Camp David. President Trump's twin surprise that he had invited the Taliban to the U.S., but then was canceling the talks, echoed in Washington and in Kabul. And that's where special correspondent Jane Ferguson is tonight. Leaving the White House today, President Trump had ominous words about the Taliban peace talks. They're dead. They're dead. As far as I'm concerned, they're dead. He spoke after canceling separate meetings with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Taliban leaders planned for this weekend at the Camp David presidential retreat. Lawmakers of both parties blasted the president for even inviting the Taliban to Camp David, days before the 18th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. Democratic Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey. I think it was ill-conceived in the first place. It's another example of the Trump administration's foreign policy, which is a high-wire act. Liz Cheney of Wyoming, the third-ranking Republican in the House, tweeted, no member of the Taliban should set foot there, ever. The meeting would have come after nearly a year of talks. U.S. officials led by Afghan native and former Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad and the Taliban had closed in on a peace deal to end the 18-year American war in Afghanistan. As part of that tentative deal, the U.S. would remove 5,000 troops in return for a Taliban pledge to reduce violence and prevent the terror groups like ISIS and al-Qaeda from operating in the country. There would also be follow-on talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government. Then, in three tweets Saturday night, President Trump announced the Camp David talks with the Taliban and said he had cancelled the meeting and called off peace negotiations. He blamed a Taliban attack last Thursday that killed a U.S. soldier. An attack, he said, proved the Taliban were negotiating in bad faith. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Sunday defended the president. Uh, when the Taliban uh, tried to uh, gain negotiating advantage by conducting terror attacks inside of the country, uh, President Trump made the right decision to say that's not going to work. In Kabul, Afghan presidential spokesman Sadiq Siddiqui welcomed the breakdown of the deal. The Afghan government says it has been shut out of the talks completely, and their criticism of the proposed deal had strained relations with the Trump administration. We strongly believe that um, that shift in policy is a reflection of the concerns that we've raised uh, towards that peace deal. And there's a true and genuine understanding in, in, in the White House of any consequences of any bad peace deal or bad peace process. Mr. Trump announced from the start of the negotiations that he was determined to pull the troops out entirely. I would have done the negotiations differently. Dr. Hamdullah Mohib is President Ashraf Ghani's national security advisor. Showing your card right at, you know, from the outset doesn't make for good negotiations. Uh, and I think uh, perhaps that's why their position has hardened uh, over the last nine months since these negotiations have been going on. Violence across Afghanistan in recent weeks has been staggering as both sides have pressured one another in the negotiations. The Taliban has killed dozens of Afghan civilians here in Kabul in suicide attacks and launched several offensives on provincial capitals, as well as killing four U.S. soldiers in the last two weeks. In turn, Afghan and American forces have been pounding the Taliban with special forces raids and airstrikes. If there is no deal and the Taliban continue to refuse to talk to the Kabul government, then the bloodshed in Afghanistan will continue. But the Taliban have still said that they won't recognize your government. If they won't sit down with you, is there a plan other than more war? If they do not accept that, and they are still a major threat to the security of us and partners, so they will face the consequences, and we have the will. The Taliban have reacted angrily, releasing a statement saying, this will harm America more than anyone else. It's not clear if the deal is completely off the table or the current collapse of the talks can be repaired. No deal at all comes with one certainty, that the U.S.'s longest war will get longer. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jane Ferguson in Kabul, Afghanistan.